Hitman is a game best known, at least on my channel, as a game that allows you to orchestrate hilariously tragic scenarios that always result in an absolute carnival of pain for everyone involved. But what if in some alternate universe, Agent 47 had a semi-life-changing experience that made him turn away from a life of killing people and to a life of making other people kill other people for him? Or of them just accidentally offing themselves? Is it possible to beat Hitman in its entirety without ever killing anyone? Well, keep watching to find out. But before we get started, I'd like to establish the rules of this Kill Nobody challenge, and they are as follows. The loadout on every single mission will be the same. A poorly chosen disguise, no gun, 100 coins, 100 skeletal finger bones, and 100 bananas. Agent 47 is not allowed to directly kill anybody in any way, but setting up accidents and disabling safeguards, such as loosening a gas canister or puncturing an oil drum, is acceptable, as long as the the death of the target is caused by a poor life decision on their behalf, i.e. smoking a cancer stick in a puddle of gasoline. Alright, that's it. Let's roll. My journey in Hitman 2016 began at the Sanguine Fashion Show in Paris, France. An opportunity for rich wankers to get together and show one another how bad their taste in fashion really is. It was also an opportunity for me to do the same. Naturally, I kicked things off by dumping a massive load of bananas at the feet of my enemies and concussing them in front of everyone because I thought it was funny. I then moved on to completely ruin a live news broadcast to knock out the presenter and the cameraman by walloping them in the face with my massive banana. As I stood there absorbing bullet after bullet into my body and bleeding out banana all over the floor, I couldn't help but ask myself, was it all worth it? It was then that I remembered that my reason for visiting Paris wasn't just to destroy everyone's face with my abnormally large potassium stick, but to orchestrate the deaths of my targets without me having to directly do it myself. Myself. And this mission story was the ticket. First, however, I had to do what I'd unironically be doing for the remainder of this video, and that was luring brain-dead NPCs to isolated locations so I could separate them from their consciousness and further my pacifist plans for world domination. I was now Securite. Also, I'm not a complete monster, so I tossed another unconscious dude in there to keep him and the flies company. Now, my target, Mr. Dickhead, was busy being a dickhead, along with his dickhead bodyguard that followed him everywhere like a dickhead. Fortunately, however, in Hitman 2016, the the dollar reigned supreme, and so I was able to distract the off-brand Walmart Agent 47 rip-off bodyguard and lure him into the back room, where I boffed him on the head with banana and stole his identity. I then went to Mr. Penis Head's business partner disguised as his bodyguard and told him that Mr. Penis Head was waiting for him in the hedge maze with a bottle of industrial strength lubricant and a slippery slide. <laughs> I also gave him the secret signal which was banana. The hell is that? Together we headed down to the pavilion, but then I had a moment of clarity and realization. I clearly realized that punching my target right in the mouth was a great idea. I also realized that whilst there was no way to create a scenario in which he either offed himself or somebody else offed him for me in the pavilion, if I could lure him down to the wharf somehow, maybe I could make magic happen there. And so after a significant amount of time and effort, it was my moment to lay down a couple of sketchy bananas and hope for the best. The only problem, however, was that Hitman 2016 was very, very strict in how close I was able to place my bananas to the ledge, which made life pretty difficult for me. Nevertheless, once I was done, I used the allure of a cheeky dollar coin to get him to walk over the bananas and then... Paraplegic for life but still not dead. I thought then that maybe if I created a little bit of a ruckus by, I don't know, popping off my assault rifle into anything and everything, that I could get some dumbass bodyguards down to the wharf to try and wake him up and possibly cause him to fall into the water instead. But of course, the bodyguard just stacked it himself, shattering his spine and what little confidence I had left in my plan. Banana. Honestly though, at this point, the sheer level of stupidity exhibited by the NPCs was probably more baffling and hilarious than it was frustrating. But yeah, we're talking like mega, mega head injury, brain dead levels of CTE artificial intelligence right here. Also the fact that old mate just be out here Michael Jackson moonwalking it on the side of the freaking wharf. It was then at that moment that I realized that reloading my save file resulted in Victor launching himself straight into the canal, which was both humorous and somewhat satisfying, but felt like a level of cheese that even I wasn't comfortable taking the credit for. Fortunately, however, after what was probably about three hours of trial and error, he got up, 
tried to hit a runner and slipped straight into the water, sinking to the bottom immediately because his suit was a blend of his own junk and cement. Anywho, after having taken care of that, it was now time to deal with my second target, Diarrhea Mondolus. Uh, what the hell is a bare knuckle boxer? What? The sanguine boss. No Don't <laughs> I put all those years of pole dancing lessons to the test and scaled my way to the top of the castle, where I proceeded to engage in close quarters combat with her entire security detail, all armed with SMGs and assault rifles, and me with a banana. They didn't stand a chance. And after finally isolating her from her security entourage, I used my dollary dues to lure her to the only location I could find in the near vicinity that looked like it allowed for falling accidents. Unfortunately, however, once again, Hitman 2016 had the NPC pathing boundaries locked down so tight that she wouldn't even step onto the scaffolding. This was going to be harder than I thought. I thought. I figured then that I could perhaps set things up a little bit more than usual, but still let the dumb NPCs actually execute the plan of the target. But no, she fell off the side of the castle, then just casually floated to the bottom, completely uninjured from the fall. Frustrated and confused, I decided to test out the logistics of my plan one more time to see if it was even possible to take down a target from this location. Seemingly, however, it wasn't. I tried again and again and again to absolutely no avail whatsoever. Diary Mondolus was simply indestructible. Even that other time when Diary Mondolus not only flopped to the level below, but also down onto the ground at the bottom of the castle, she still managed to survive that too somehow. So I was like, all right, this video is going to be a tremendously large pain in my ass. And I immediately regretted deciding to do it. I was going to need to get Diary Mondolus all the way down to the wharf. And what that meant was literally taking down every single security guard in the entire mansion with a banana, which was both challenging and extremely healthy. Once I finally got her down there, though, I wiggled and jiggled and wriggled Diary Mondolus around the pile of banana peels on the floor, trying to find the perfect angle for great success. I then ran upstairs and did a little bit more shooty-shooty to get some attention and waited for good old Captain T-Pose to come along and save the day. Good job. Captain T-Pose. Margolis is down. Mission success. But boy, oh boy, did my asshole hurt. And just like that, I hopped onto my private helicopter and flew off into the Parisian sunset, ready for more action. Or no action, actually. It was fine, though, because next up was my favorite place to visit in the entire world, Sapienza, Italy. <laughs> the perfect little storm in a teacup. Always a good time, no matter who dies. I headed straight up to my apartment where I rang the doorbell to make sure that I wasn't home before letting myself in and picked up my 100 skeletal finger bones, all taken from my enemies, which I used to scratch my bum hole when it was itchy. I then ran out onto the roof and hopped down into the courtyard of Villa Caruso, where I snuck my way into the housekeeper's quarters, knocked him out, stole his clothes, and realized that that was completely unnecessary as there was already a staff outfit waiting for me in the change rooms. Oh well. Magnificently, the delightful chaps in the kitchen had decided to store their rat poison right next to their food ingredients, so I swooped in, picked it up, and plopped to the entire tube right in a spaghetti. With that done, I went outside and rang the bell, signaling to Silvia Caruso that it was time for lunch, aka time to eat a bowl full of pasta and spend the rest of your day chundering over the side of a cliff. Motherfucker. As expected, Sylvia had a meltdown because it tasted like ass, and I got to work trying to make this man slip on a banana peel and fall to his death. Obviously, there was a lot of this, and a lot of this, and a lot of this. And even when he did miraculously fall off the edge, he somehow managed every single time, despite landing directly on his head from about 40 feet in the air, to get back up again completely uninjured. Finally, however, a little further down the ledge at the exact location, ironically, that you can press G to dump a body, he slipped, he got stuck, and then he got finished by his marvelously hey, stupid bodyguard. Caruso has been hit. Have a banana. Flustered and covered in vomit, I headed back to the town square to find the private investigator that would lead me to my final target, Francesco da Pantis. But first, there was still just enough time to troll a couple of dumb NPCs and ruin their day. Look at old mate just running away, leaving his missus on the floor. <laughs> what a man. 
And anyway, after finding the detective, I banged him in the head with my big yellow ding dong and took his clothes, becoming the ultimate detective myself. I then proceeded to make my way downtown to the wharf to meet Da Pantis, but once again I decided that I had just enough time for a little bit of good old fashioned Mario Kart. Once again, old mate proving to the world why he is the ultimate man. Anyway, once Da Pantis and her security entourage arrived at the wharf, I knew exactly what I needed to do, and that was drop my coins all over the floor. Sir, I think, wait a minute. Then I enticed De Pantis to the edge of the wharf with a $1 coin and proceeded to lay down a whole bunch of banana peels at her feet. Then... <sighs> broken spine, but still not dead. It was okay, though, because I was confident that somehow one of the moronic NPCs in that unconscious heap would wake up and cause something ridiculous to happen. So, I just kept my distance and waited, patiently. And then... Gets down. With that done, I headed back to my apartment, rang the bell to make sure I wasn't home before letting myself in, and grabbed my explosive golf ball off the kitchen table. I used it to shatter the wall leading to the secret underground virus laboratory, and proceeded to do science the wrong way, sending the lab into a meltdown. The other scientists tried to escape, but I thwarted them by means of banana, and then went back to save both men from certain doom that awaited them if they didn't immediately get out of the decontamination chamber before the lab blew up. Done and dusted with Sapienza, I hopped onto my little seaplane and flew all the way to Morocco, baby, dressed as a giant purple flamingo. After all, I wanted to blend in with the locals. Having made my way through the throngs of tourists packing the marketplace, I headed to the Swedish embassy where a violent protest was in full swing. The perfect distraction for a giant flamingo like me to jump the fence without anybody noticing. Once again, by means of dollary do, I lured an elite guard over to my location, then UFC'd him until he was unconscious, stealing his clothes and the deed to his farm. Now, in order to get to my first target, Klaus, I had to get past a couple of Sekis that were blocking the staircase. So, you guessed it. Banana. Much to my delight, as soon as I got inside, I realized that Klaus was an easy man to find. He just seemed to walk around the embassy all day doing nothing. The problem, however, was that there was no way for me to encourage this guy to off himself, so I just put a bunch of bananas on the floor because I didn't know what else to do. What I didn't realize, though, was that after stacking it, Klaus went into a panicked frenzy and fled the embassy through the underground escape tunnels, which finally brought him to a Rendez Vaus point surrounded by armed guards close to the abandoned in high school where my other target was hanging out. Naturally, the only thing that made sense was to just banana everyone and hope for the best. And let me tell you, there were a good 30 plus guys there that got the banana in the face. It was exhausting, but in the end, I got the job done. Down at the nearby abandoned high school, there was also a formidable number of guards that I needed to deal with if I was going to put my master plan into action, which I haven't yet revealed to you, but believe me, it's... Well, it's on brand. And then after having completely disarmed the abandoned school's external threat, I shot a couple of three-point bananas because I could. I then headed back to the Rendez Vaus point where I collected my unconscious target and dragged him all the way back to the high school where my other target was currently chilling. I then dealt with whoever was standing between me and my other target's office by luring them around a corner with a cheeky dollar coin and choking them unconscious. And probably a little bit past unconscious to the point of like permanent brain damage, but not dead. So it was okay. Oh yes, and then I made a quick trip back to the marketplace to grab a propane tank. The reason for this was that I figured that if I placed this propane tank in the right place, I could essentially extend the blast radius of the ginormous red gas canister to behind the big green crate. This was important because I took my unconscious target behind the big green crate and left him there. I then loosened the valve on the ginormous gas canister and turned off old mate's little gas lamp, which he didn't like. As soon as he got back to to his office, he for some reason turned on his little lamp in the middle of the day and both targets down. Be With that done, I strolled my way through the marketplace and slipped out the secret exit and then ran all the way to Bangkok, baby! Now I had the inside scoop that a couple of audio technicians were talking about the notorious Branson microphone that had a reputation for electrocuting people that touched it. So I headed to the hotel lobby and checked in despite never intending to go to my own room. Man caused a little bit of an unnecessary ruckus by choking out the bellboy, a couple of security guards and smashing some dude in the head for no reason whatsoever. Well, there was, there's always a reason. And fortunately, 
fortunately, there was even a fire extinguisher on the wall, which was good because I didn't have a key to the room I needed to get into. Not a traditional key anyway. Then once inside, I walked around the unconscious naked guy on the floor and picked up the Branson microphone. Before leaving, however, I slipped into the bathroom, changed into something a little more casual and overflowed both sinks while I stared at myself in the mirror, trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with me? As soon as I got to the jam session, the old guy with the scarf told me to go and connect up the Branson microphone that he ordered from Amazon. So I did as I was told, because I am a good little sound technician, and I'm also quite a good photographer. So I waited with my camera out, zoomed in, ready to capture that perfect Kodak moment. <laughs> With target number one down, the only one left was Mr. Ken. Apparently, if I could fix the tuk-tuk out the back, Ken was going to buy it. So I went and grabbed myself a wrench and got mechanical. Thinking that he repaired it himself by doing absolutely nothing, the brain-dead gardener rushed off to tell Ken the good news and to try and sell him his tuk-tuk for $47 million dues. To celebrate, I punctured the nearby gas canister and I ruptured the gas tank of the nearby motorbike. Now, I had pretty high hopes for the fireworks, that is to say, I thought that they would be great, but they were mediocre at best. Then with Thailand swiftly in the bag, the only thing left to do was to sail to my next destination, which I did by boat all the way there. Yep, Bangkok to Colorado, aka Kill Nobody Challenge Hell. Now, dear darling people at home, if you're watching this and say, hey, I'd like to try completing this mission without ever killing anybody, then let me tell you what you're going to need. Several hours and an abundance of coins and bananas. The gist of it though is like every other mission to sneak around and smack everyone in the head with a ginormous banana whilst doing your best not to get seen or shot. What I knew going in though was that there was one NPC who loved sunking down the cancer sticks next to highly flammable objects like gas canisters or barrels of petrol. And if I could find a way to get all of my targets back here without him noticing and then get him to stand close enough to one of those explosive items while sparking up, I might just be able to pull off the impossible. After all, killing four targets is no easy feat. Nevertheless, with a whole bunch of patience, I was able to pull apart Colorado's elite militia one NPC at a time. And before I knew it, I had my targets falling for the same dumb traps. Still, there were more NPCs that needed to be taken down in other locations, but with the assistance of Banana, that wasn't particularly difficult to accomplish. And as it just so happened, Penelope Gravy Train just happened to stroll past and I <laughs> just happened to banana her and her bodyguard and then dragged her all the way across the map via the humanitarian corridor that I had spent the past few hours creating. The final target that liked to walk around outside in the open was Michael Jackson, who just like all the others fell for the old dollar in the dust trick and the old banana peel on the floor trick gets them every time, dum dum targety dum dums. With all three of them out cold and gathered in the nearby vicinity of the guy that liked to smoke ciggies next to explosive barrels, I proceeded to drop a bunch of coins at his feet to keep him busy long enough for me to put the final phase of my plan into action. I raced around and dragged Maya Perverti, Penelope, and Michael Jackson as close as I could to the oil drum. Then I punctured it with my screwdriver, and I waited for him to punch the last durry he would ever punch. Great success! Though admittedly, the smell of four burning bodies within one meter of my location was quite stinky. Now, I still had Sean Rose to take care of, but there was a more interesting way to take him down that required even less background work on my behalf. You see, if I could trigger his OCD enough, he'd run out here to just like the other fool suck down a Siggy of Doom and soon realize that smoking kills. Especially if you just so happen to do it next to a visibly ruptured propane tank. And so I headed into the house and proceeded to trigger Sean's OCD by playing with the clock's hands and by messing up his little pencils on his desk. Triggered hard and in a blind rage, he obviously didn't see or smell the ginormous cloud of propane that he was standing in when he went to light his ciggy. That's his fault though. 
Not mine. See you later, Coloradado. You won't be missed. And hello, Hokkaido. My favorite place to attempt the kill nobody challenge because this map was practically made for it. I knew I was going to be done in a jiffy. And so I enthusiastically launched myself out of bed straight onto the balcony and proceeded to shimmy my way across the 500 foot drop below to the adjoining apartment where I bashed a cowboy, stole his cigarettes and summoned a couple of doctors. And now a doctor myself, I made my way into the resort with a new level of clarity unlike anything I'd experienced during the entire 10 hours this video took to record. I knew where to go and exactly what I needed to do. I went out into the bitter cold to find myself a screwdriver as I knew I was going to need it if I wanted my plan to work. And then headed into the sushi restaurant where I hopped the fence and replaced the lovely Japanese lady's durries with the fresh packet that I stole from the unconscious cowboy. Huh? Could it be? Yes, thank the spirits. Now to find a good place to light up these babies. This is going to be good. Having already punctured the oil drum earlier, all I needed to do was stand by and patiently wait for my target to foolishly stand in a deep puddle of gasoline, spark up a ciggy, and then toss the burning butt into the petrol on the floor. If you exhibit this level of negligence, then you probably deserve to die. Before leaving though, I did give her a banana for her troubles. I then went on to perform another death-defying feat to shimmy my way across to the now lovely dead Japanese lady's apartment to steal her USB dingle dongle that contained the list of people that my other target had killed in his younger years. And I prepared to put it to bad use. In order to do that, I sneakily snuck my way to the secret alcove on the underside of the Gamma Medical Research Center just in time to catch up with the helicopter pilot slash drug smuggler and quickly smuggled his identity as my own. Then, whilst enjoying a good old rough and aggressive frisking, the head surgeon came outside to ask me for some drugs. So I took him back to my secret drug stash and told him to take all of it. Meanwhile, I slipped upstairs and banana a surgeon and his bodyguard so I could take his outfit and enter the operating theater without any unwanted attention from the security guards downstairs. I then quickly ran in and uploaded the kill list to the head surgeon's personal computer and excitedly waited for the fallout. I love drama. Completely off his head on drugs and shattered by the realization that the man he was attempting to save had murdered his father all those years ago, he completely lost his sh and well this happened screw fda approval right here right now eric sodas is going to pay says he writes your bastard <laughs> this is for my father <laughs> And that right there is how you beat Hitman 2016 without ever killing anybody. Thanks for watching and make sure you watch my Hitman 2 and Hitman 3 Kill Nobody Challenge videos that can be found below in the comments and the description. Laters! So my journey at becoming the nicest guy in the world for the second time began with me ankle deep in the New Zealand sea because I like my shoes and socks nice and soggy. My mission was to infiltrate the shadow client's beautiful seaside mansion which she inherited from the nice family she killed that lived there before her. Simply put, she was the worst and needed to die. But I wasn't allowed to directly have anything to do with it because I am the nicest hitman ever. As soon as I got to the poolside entrance, I picked up the screwdriver on the floor and threw it with what I thought was bullet-like velocity. But apparently it wasn't because the pot didn't even crack. I was going to need to find another way in because I just wasn't getting that key without a gun. Which, by the way, are against my religion today. Climbing up rainwater drainage pipes, however, is A-OK. -okay. So I did it. And then I hopped onto the balcony and straight into the bathroom window. I guess breaking and entering is OK too. Inside the target's bedroom, there was a squeaky bird toy on the floor next to her bed. I guess she was kinky like that and I was uncomfortable. Nevertheless, I searched the house high and low looking for viable accidents that I could potentially assist in the orchestration of. Unfortunately, however, I came up emptier than an elephant's bowels after his morning coffee. Hacking the mainframe, however, seemed like a good idea, but the password wasn't password, and that was the extent of my puzzle-solving skills. But my OCD came in clutch and led me to a secret gangbang room <laughs> full of weapons which I couldn't use, and a USB dingle dongle that I could use to bypass the password 
on the mainframe. Just as I was getting to the good bits, however, my target came home with her harem of boy toys and I knew it was time to get swifty. I slipped downstairs and prepared to separate the target from her personal stripper. <laughs> personal stripper aka bodyguard, who came in to turn off the tap and I came in to turn off his consciousness. Now running around the house as a six foot something man in a bright white suit and practically being invisible to everyone at point blank range was a treat. So I spent a bit of time just running around the house like an asshole taking it all in. I then realized that I could lure the target's boyfriend into the curtains under the stairs with a greedy little coin. I also realized that I could glitch him out and get his head stuck in the wall. <laughs> so I ended up spending more time than I probably should have doing that over and over and over again. When I was done, eventually, I finally decided to hide him properly. I then zipped into the garage to pick up the only propane tank that I knew the location of on this level. After all, this level served as more of a tutorial for Hitman 2 than anything else, and the target didn't really have a path littered with accident opportunities that many of the other targets had. The only death that could be attributed to self-negligence, questionable as it is, was to pop a ruptured propane tank right at the spot where she would eventually go to suck down a nice smoky cancer stick before tucking in for the night. Well done, 47. Now get off the property. And with that done, I hopped on my boat and I rode it all the way to the happiest place on earth. Miami, Florida, baby. Now, in order to get to my first target, Sierra Knox, and not kill her, I would need to first get her off the racetrack, and I knew just what to do. I choked out the delightful gentleman who was very quietly playing a nice game of Raid Shadow Legends in his van, and then I stole his clothes after dumping him in unconscious in a box. Then as a race marshal, I headed to the other race marshal manning the flag booth and offered him up some prime potassium on the floor. I waited until Sierra Knox came zooming around and I disqualified her for being alive. On my adventures around Miami, I happened to find some car keys in a puddle of blood next to a half-naked man. So, naturally, I stole them, and then I gave them to a giant flamingo who thanked me and who I then bananaed. Now, his car keys, much to my surprise, opened a van where he had some incriminating documents regarding Sierra Knox's public defecation... <laughs> incidents. I told her bodyguard that I had evidence of her pooping in public and said I wanted to meet with her. Then I followed her down a dark alley so that I could be blackmailed, which is my favorite. So here are the two possible outcomes of this meeting. One, you will leave this place and this country for good, and that will be the end of it. Everyone lives happily ever after. Two, you don't choose option one. Someone dies right here, right now. Which do you prefer? Not much of a choice, is it? No, not really. Goodbye. Goodbye. <sighs> Talk it down. Next up, Robert Knox. Now, with Sierra noxing herself out, I headed to Kronstadt Technologies to help her father, Robert, nox himself out too. Firstly, however, I needed to head into Robbo's office to steal the dingle dongle that he'd very foolishly left upon his desk. And then, with said dingle dongle, I hacked his mainframe, disabling his satellite dish and disrupting the illegal UFC pay-per-view stream he was watching without paying. Naturally, I used my high-level stealth skills to place even more bananas around his feet after he arrived, without ever getting noticed, because... <laughs> Because I am undeniably the stealthiest, most tactical as testicle that ever did live. Banana peel placement is an art, though, and it requires hours upon hours of recalibration in order to get it just right. And even then, it only works 2% of the time, every time. What you can rely on pretty consistently, though, is the stupidity of the target's guards to come and also slip and snack it in a hilarious fashion, like this idiot right here. Or for them to just completely f*** up and do the job for you. And with that done, I packed up and got ready to head to my next destination, which just so happened to be a crack cocaine-filled jungle somewhere in South America. I decided to greet one of the locals with one of my big fat bananas. He was fine though, just having a little sleepy sleepy with his face firmly planted on his wheelbarrow. And then after having snuck into my first target's office, I used some of my cheeky coins to lure the guards and someone's grandma into the bathroom where I boffed them in the head with my potassium sticks. With everyone now bananaed up, I proceeded to follow my first target around the map, trying to identify potential hazards 
that she may have been unfortunate enough to walk by. Alas, there were none. So I did what any psychopath would have done and I used my abundance of dollary dues to lure my target down to the bayou. I then placed some cheeky bananas right along the edge of the water and I waited for the magics to happen. Unfortunately, however, it didn't exactly happen the way I wanted it to and there was a lot of trial, error and hilarious glitching out that happened before she finally ended up stacking it close enough to the edge for one of her idiot bodyguards to accidentally nudge her right off into the piranha-filled waters below. Next up was old mate Rico Delgado, who, just like his girlfriend, Mrs. Drugs, didn't seem to walk past anything dangerous, making an accidental death equally as tricky and time-consuming as the last one. I did at some point lure him down to the hippo pit, thinking for some reason that the hippo would grab him and pull him in. But it seemed like I needed to be the one to push him for it to work, and that was against the rules of the Kill Nobody Challenge. So I went back to the drawing board, and once once again resorted to a whole lot of coin tossing and banana peel dropping until finally the game crapped itself and plopped him into the water for me. You had an accident. I'll find help. <laughs> Rico Delgado has been eliminated. It was now time for my final target on this mission. Jorge Masvidal, who very curiously seemed to spend a ton of time hanging around a guard who liked to smoke ciggies next to a ginormous oil barrel. So back to the oil drum I went. A bunch of coins in hand and a tremendously dangerous puddle of oil on the ground. Surely this is it, I thought to myself, chuckling like, like a maniac. But no, it seemed like Jorge's bodyguard would continue smoking literally forever while he was within standing distance of the barrel. And in order to make the oil go boom boom, he had to not just suck on the cancer sticks, but toss them directly into the puddle of oil on the ground. My life had just gotten complicated. And so, with the assistance of my bag of coins once more, I selflessly contributed to the betterment of a foreign economy, because I am a nice guy. <laughs> All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Excellent work, 47. Now head for an exit. Unfortunately, however, everyone seemed to accidentally blow themselves up, so I accidentally stole their attack chopper and flew to my next destination. Mumbai, India. What a place. A place so wonderful that they literally leave wheelbarrows full of gas tanks on every street corner. As far as I was concerned, they should have called this place heaven. I had three targets to take down, and to take down the first, I thought that a little bit of sewer play would be fun. So I chucked a nana in the river of human feces, and I lured a guard down into it so I could steal his feces covered clothes. Mmm, <laughs> feces. Then I yeeted some sick dude into the poop because I thought he was already sick and a face full of poo wouldn't make a difference. Unfortunately, my target saw this and ran away screaming. Eventually, however, he did end up at this spot where he had a nice convo with some Indian cougar in a purple sari. But separating them and also the weirdo that was just hanging around in the middle of everything proved to be quite difficult, even with the allure <laughs> of the mighty US dollar. Still, just like every other tricky not-my-fault death in this video, through lots of trial and error, I made it work. Then, having separated my target from everyone else around him, and being somewhat close to a location that happened to be on the edge of the water and without a safety railing, I got to work. 47, that's the maelstrom. You found him. Now it was time to not deal with my second target who had some shifty thing going on with the local laundromat. I snuck in through the window and boffed the worker and his foreman in the head with my big banana and then got Bollywood ready. Dummy more. Well, the objective is... Uh. Oh! It was then that I remembered that there were actually more interesting ways to have somebody else take down my targets in Mumbai for me. And so I rewound time, scaled the side of a building, and hoisted my way to the top where another assassin was planning on shooting the very same targets I was sent here to take down. He, however, didn't know how to adjust the scope on his rifle, so I did it for him because I'm a nice guy. Then I raced over to the building that his rifle was pointing at, hoisted myself through the window, and bopped the security guard and the painter in the face with my ginormous banana. I let my target know that I was ready to paint his portrait, and we headed downstairs together, hand in hand, <laughs> ready to make out. As I painted, I looked over in the distance, and I could see my new friend getting ready to do my job for me. This was good, I thought, as I skillfully slapped paint all over the canvas. Can you look up a bit? <laughs> Thank you. 
Once more, I spotted him in the distance and blew him a kiss for doing my job for me twice in one day. Absolute legend. <laughs> That is Vanya Shah taking care of 47. Matter of fact, I was so stoked that I dropped an entire massive load of bananas all over the floor. I then hopped in a tuk-tuk, paid the guy a dollar, and asked him to drive me all the way to Whittleton Creek, USA. The perfect place to not kill anyone. It appeared that the Wilsons were having a barbecue party and that everyone was invited. Kind of like the party in my pan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. There was also a barbecue missing a propane tank. Mmm, propane, I thought to myself. Propane and fire. What a good combination. I like propane and fire. I like explosions. Boom, boom, yummy. And I just so happened to know that there was a propane tank over in the neighbor's yard. So I hopped the fence to grab it, but happened to unintentionally eavesdrop on a conversation between Janus the Anus's guards talking about his nurse chucking his ciggies out the window. I ran into a nearby bush and immediately recovered Janus the Anus's lost cigarettes. Then I climbed the drainage pipe of Anus's house to the second floor and let myself in. I immediately loosened the oxygen tank because I figured that an old dude on life support could always use more oxygen and I gave him a new pack of ciggies because I figured that an old dude on life support could always use more cancer. As old Trotsky said, just as a lamp... Finally. An end to Janus. One boom, however, was not enough, so I headed back to the barbecue, this time dressed as the Muffin Man, and offered Nolan Cassidy some potato chips that I didn't even poison. I just thought he looked hungry and would enjoy them. I then turned off the barbecue and noticed it getting a little bit low on propane, so I offered the barbecue guy a free refill. <laughs> For some reason, however, he turned it back on with the propane tank literally on the grill. Rookie mistake. And that is before leaving Whittleton Creek, however, I disguised myself as a garbo and rode that massive pile of trash on wheels off into the sunset and all the way to the Isle of Scale somewhere in Scotland. Now getting to a secluded island in the middle of nowhere on an entirely different continent by garbage truck is no easy feat, but I managed and was also single and ready to mingle with my dingle. It was then, however, that I remembered that there was an optional quest on this map that required me to collect a bunch of commemorative tokens in order to apply for a membership to the Ark Society. So I ran around for a while collecting commemorative tokens like an absolute dickhead and also remembered that I needed this guy's knight in order to complete that mission. So I bernarded him and took it, as well as the commemorative tokens that he dropped on the floor. Hey loser, yeah you. How's the hunt? Well, feast your eyes on this. That's right. Hey! What gives? Give that back! Now, the gist of this part of the mission is that if you answer falsely to a bunch of stupid questions, your target, who is this lady right here, somehow ends up electrocuting herself. So, I just answered all her questions like an idiot, which is what I do always anyway, and somehow she zapped herself to death. It was perfect! One target down. Nice work, 47. Looks like an accident. Next up... Sophia Washington. Next, I had to figure out a way to get to my second target. So I lured a guy called the architect into the toilet and smashed a banana over his head before stealing the blueprints in his pocket and his clothes pretending to be him. Masquerading as the architect, I approached the constant and told him that I had designed the poison chip that he had in his head and that I could tell him how to deactivate it if he'd give me a hand. He invited me back to his secret sex lab for a chat where I gave him the blueprints for the poison chip in his head and asked him about out that ha he then excused himself from our meeting, called up my target and told her that he knew she was trying to set him up and to meet him on top of the tower for a stern, stern scolding. Busted. Now, having not killed anyone for the entirety of this video thus far, I was feeling pretty pro and I thought that this time around I would flex my skill level by using one single banana instead of an entire plantation. Both targets down. 
Impressive work, 47. I am the best, I thought to myself as I hijacked a helicopter and flew to my next destination. A destination which realistically shouldn't even be a part of this video because now we're going into DLC territory and that's practically no man's land. But I am a tactical testicle. And so, here we are. Welcome to Milton Bradley's <laughs> Bank of New York. The first thing I did was head down into the safety deposit vault where I consented to a rough and aggressive deep, deep frisking. And of course, they uncovered nothing illegal because I am a nice guy and definitely not a criminal. I did, however, have 100 bananas cleverly hidden inside my bar. With that out of the way, I helped myself to the confidential information that was cleverly stashed inside this safety deposit box and handed it over to Ronald McDonald's wife, only to then realize that this mission story was completely pointless and would not accomplish what I had set out to do. It was then, however, that I looked up and remembered everything. I remembered that there was a bank heist that was about to go down and the criminals were plotting it in the public restroom. I had to stop them before it was too late. And I did so with my superpowers, which just so happened to be banana. Don't hit me! Ah, Regardless, Athena's office was at the top of the building, and I had made it there. But it was heavily guarded by elite guards whose only weakness was banana, which, <laughs> which I had more than a few of. Thank goodness for that. You see what that sound was, please? Acknowledged. I headed over to the ginormous clock window and pressed G, thinking that it said tampon when actually <laughs> it said Tampa. I then patiently waited for tampon to happen. <laughs> In the end, however, it wasn't quite tampon. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have to do. <laughs> now that that was done, it was time to walk all the way to the Maldives. Now you'd think that with all that walking, I would have lost a few pounds, but I actually put on about 80. And as my good fortune would have it, my very first target was literally in front of me as soon as I arrived on the island. She did look a little bit sweaty though, and I figured that she could probably use some electrolytes. Too much of it, however, and it can kill you. So consume responsibly, preferably not in banana peel form, preferably not on the floor, preferably not on a ledge, preferably not next to the ocean. Two targets remain. With my first target taken care of, within the first 30 seconds of entering the mission, I ran over to Eminem and tossed him a dollar, which seemed to excite him. So I dropped a few more. Now this bought me enough time to run to the other side of the island and procure myself a wrench and a proplane, pro 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 flash, propane flask, which I used to loosen the knob thingies on some oxygen tanks and to just be an overall nuisance. Once again, however, I was amazed at the NPCs in Hitman's willingness to spark up a durry with a busted gas tank right in their face. But busted gas tank always go boom. And me like big boom boom. Having not eliminated every single one of my targets thus far, I now had one left to not eliminate also. And he lived inside this fancy tropical mansion, kitted out with a spa and everything. Unfortunately, however, it appeared to be busted. So I gave the incompetent spa technician some potassium and then I fixed it myself. This caused fat Leonardo DiCaprio to rock up with his budgie smugglers on looking like a piece of moldy bread. <coughs> Ah, oh, that's it. Mm. Loosen it up. Now, I did my best to tune out all the sus things he kept saying as he lay there spread legged in the spa with his balls all up in my face. And I did what I do best. Banana. That's all we need to do from here. Then, having brought about Armageddon to Haven Island and ruining everyone's tropical vacation, I decided to steal a seaplane and fly away. After all, the Hitman 2 Kill Nobody challenge was complete and I needed to get to work on Hitman 2016's. Laters. So this is where my quest for being the ultimate nice guy got started. In the beautiful land of Dubai, atop a bazillion dollar thousand floor glass building, what could possibly go wrong? I made sure to drink every glass of champers on the tray to assist me with my performance anxiety, then headed on up to the stage to collect my award for being a massive sick. I then remembered, however, that this was a kill nobody challenge where I would attempt to complete the entire Hitman 3 game in one go without ever killing anybody, and headed back upstairs a little more like a normal person and a little less like a psychopath. This is going to be hard. 
I said to myself. I strolled into the main foyer area where rich knobs were schmoozing with one another and then slipped straight on by to the security office where Mr. German Scheisser video was looking for his new personal bodyguard. This gave me my first great idea of this video. I sprinted straight downstairs to where Barack Obama was having his ciggy break with his good mate Baldy McDickface. <laughs> And then slip past and into the kitchen, then into the change rooms to steal the new recruit's paperwork that would allow me to masquerade as him, giving me unrestricted access to my stupid target. As I started to head back upstairs, though, I soon realized that I was going to need Barack Obama's uniform, so I boffed him and his mate over the head as hard as I could with the handyman's wrench that I was carrying. I assure you, they sustained no long-term injuries as a result of this extremely damaging experience. Probably. The toilet seemed like the perfect place to hide a couple of bodies, and also to use them to completely mop up all the urine and feces off the floor with their faces. By the time I was done, it was absolutely spotless. They then handed in my paperwork to the security guards and was told to wait for German Dingleberry Supreme. <laughs> To arrive. He asked for my transfer papers and told me that I look like a man with a big pee pee. And I said that I was. Before giving me the job though, he took me outside onto the balcony thingy so he could put my skills to the test. Now giving a maniac a table full of Ginsu blade sharp kitchen knives is never a good idea, but this was the kill nobody challenge and so I used them only for good and not for, gra <laughs> for great. As I drilled a bunch of blocks dangling from the sky, he told me that I must be good at Minecraft and then fired his other bodyguard because I was more of a man than he would ever be. Now, getting old mate close enough to the edge to technically off himself was going to be a tricky ordeal. The start as the game has some kind of safety feature built in that's meant to prevent him from going too close to the edge. If you also couple that with the fact that bananas make people slip backwards in this game, then you've got an even trickier nut to crack. But I was the master of busting nuts. Hold on, wait, what? Eventually, though, after a great deal of big brain power, I managed to circumvent the game's built-in safety protocols by making that ledge so unsafe that no matter where you stood, there was literally nothing the game could ever do to save you. Hey, come on, come on. Ah. Hey, pull it down. I need you to stand up and fight the aliens. <laughs> And with old mate accidentally plopping his employer off the edge of the building whilst trying to resuscitate him, I moved further up the building to my next target, Carlos. <laughs> Carlos. The first thing I did was wait for his personal bodyguard to come running downstairs to investigate the naked man sleeping on the job, then choked him out with some UFC and stole his clothes, packing on 40 pounds instantly. The first thing I saw as I walked upstairs into the penthouse was the emergency evacuation swipe card thingy and the parachutes. This gave me my second great idea of the day. I was, however, going to require the evacuation keycard if I was going to make this happen. But being the clever clogs that I am, I knew exactly where it was and the code to the safe. Booyah! Then by swiping the two keypad thingies in quick succession, I managed to freak everyone out and successfully tricked Carlos into throwing himself off the side of the building in an attempt to parachute to freedom. Again, however, getting him to actually slip off the side of the building was no easy task as it was fully kitted out once more with anti-fall to your death due to egregiously placed banana peels all over the floor safeguards. I, however, am a professional and was confident in my ability to trick the game once more with a good old-fashioned dose or overdose of potassium. Wasn't all smooth sailing though, I'm not gonna lie, there were a few occasions, and by a few I mean literally like 90, where Carlos would just spread eagle with his back against the side of the building doing freaky stuff that Spider-Man himself couldn't even do. But I could always rely on his clever guy to get the job done right. I then spread eagled myself off the side of the building with my AK-47 attached to my parachute bag, which somehow still managed to work. Dartmoor was now calling my name, however, and it was once more time to not be responsible for causing somebody else's death. I was feeling sassy and knew just what I needed to do. Using a greedy little coin, I knew that I could pique the curiosity of curious detective Whitmore, so I chucked it in a bush and waited for him to wander over. I then jujitsued him in the dick and took his clothes, making me the new curious detective who was going to solve the ultimate murder mystery resulting in the death of my target without me ever needing to 
to lift a finger. The maid winked at me and told me that I looked like a chiseled masculine slab of nightmare fuel, then invited me into the mansion. First, however, I needed to consent to a deep frisking. I wasn't carrying anything illegal or anything, but I wasn't too sure how they'd feel about the hundred bananas in my pockets. But as it turned out, my worries were unfounded, as they completely failed to find any of them, because they were all in my bum. <laughs> My job was now to investigate the murder scene, digging for clues and bits of evidence that I could use to uncover the truth. Unfortunately for my employer, however, I had a fairly extreme confirmation bias, and so the only evidence I was looking for was the evidence that pinned this guy, Suey, on my target. I broke into Mr. Furby, the butler's office, with my big rusty key and salvaged the charred remains of the deceased's diary from his fireplace. That diary was all that I needed, but I continued to interrogate everyone to give the impression that I actually gave a crap about finding the objective truth rather than the truth I had decided upon before even arriving in Dartmoor. Finally, I sat down with my target, Madam Carlyle, and told her the good news. Her brother had offed himself because she pretended to off herself, so her offing herself made him go off too, which made her obviously responsible for him offing himself. Then so she offed herself too, by yeeting herself off the balcony, which I absolutely did not fail to snap a shot of. Gotta ah. capture those Kodak moments. Anyway, with the murder case solved, I hopped onto my boat and sailed off to my next destination that just so happened to be this junky nightclub in Berlin, which was surprisingly difficult to get to by boat. Naturally, before going in, I once again consented to a very deep, rough, and aggressive frisking that failed to uncover anything worthy of attention. Then, instead of turning left to go into the club, I turned right to pick up the cheeky ICA drop-off that Diana left for me in the cloakroom. 100 hot and spicy yellow handyman wrenches. On my way to the dance floor, I saw plenty of other viable uses for my abundance of tools, like using them on this other tool right here. But I refrained, because this was the kill nobody challenge, and I'm a nice guy. Looking out at the crowd, though, and then the sketchy walkway above them, I immediately had another fantastic idea. By shimmying my way across this dangerous ledge and up into the control panel for the electrical lighting rig above the dance floor, I was able to jam a metal screwdriver directly into this giant electrical box with no regards for my own safety because I'm an alpha male and am probably at more risk from the ridiculous facial implants I spent all my money on than the electrical shock I was going to encounter from my own reckless stupidity. With that done, however, I had to infiltrate the DJ booth, which was going to be tricky because there were so many junkies hanging around in the back room, but I figured this is the kill nobody challenge and not the knock nobody's teeth out of their mouth challenge. I then overloaded everyone's climax with my sick beats before putting on a fancy light show for them, all because people on drugs generally like light shows, except when the lights are faulty and they end up cooking you alive. Now on the plus side though, that was two of my five targets taken care of. Now to deal with the remaining three. Looking around at all the possible targets, because there are literally like a dozen or more on this level, I noticed a shared trait between the vast majority of them. They were almost all durry punches, which is Aussie slang for somebody that sucks on the cancer sticks. I also noticed an abundance of gas canisters recklessly left around the club in various locations. I figured that if I waited around long enough, some of these bozos would walk past one of them whilst punching a durry and end up blowing himself up in the process. But instead of one, I ended up getting three. Mission accomplished. But unfortunately, I dropped me taco. Uh, have you seen a girl around? Uh, short hair with a bright green bag? Yeah. Shit. Sorry. So that never actually happened. But I did go to China. And in China, I also successfully killed nobody. Let me explain. It all started with a group of delightful hobos talking about an experiment that was being conducted in the big building above them. Apparently, they were being paid large sums of Robux in exchange for dying. Now, I knew a good deal when I saw one, and I headed straight up the ladder and into the building to register myself. Now, I could have taken the stairs like a normal person, but it was raining outside, and I liked to get wet. The experiment, however, was not what I expected. It was way better. They looked like they they were having an absolute blast. But after finally climbing my way to the top floor of the building, I saw one of my targets reclined in his lazy boy chair, probably getting acupuncture on his testes. I hear it is all the rage for getting the sperms moving. I punched in the key code that I for some reason still remembered and lured the scientist lady outside as she possessed something that's very dangerous to a man like me common sense. Without her, my target would have no hesitations in cranking his machine up to 9,000 
and frying his own brains in the process. With that done, I snuck into the dunny cans and boofed the next hobo test subject in the head, stuffing them into the closet and ironically saving their lives. I then put on their poo-stained dressing gown and headed in to do science. There was, however, already another hobo test subject in the chair, so I boofed them in the face and saved their life too. It was then time to play VR with Mr. I Wear My Pants Around My Nipples. Log, continuing experiment, H109. Run calibration, 120%. H109 continued. 120% signal strength confirmed. Yes. This is it. It's all incredibly sharp. I feel my mind expanding. I... I feel... I'm not scared of you. On me. Having now lost my only opportunity to make mega robux, I jumped out the window and headed to my next target. Getting into ICA HQ was going to be no easy feat, but I knew that with some strategic planning and a dose of potassium, I could make it happen. Then let me tell you, it sure did feel good waltzing into one of the most secure facilities in the world using nothing but a banana, which they completely failed to locate on my person once again. As soon as I walked down the stairs, however, I was immediately confronted with a potential opportunity to take down my target. But then I remembered. Today, I would not be taking down anybody. I had to bide my time and be a true tactical testicle. I knew that an analyst suit would at least gain me access to the other rooms on this floor without triggering the alarm. So I gave this bloke a nice succulent Chinese massage and then headed straight to the employee control room where I knew I could make magic happen without ever making it happen kind of thing. They told me to piss off though. And so I needed to get myself an elite guard outfit from the most secure level in the entire facility, which I did with a rusty crowbar, because super secure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, please! Ah! After that, I headed back into the employee control room and fired both the guard watching the power core and the lady responsible for managing the safeguards necessary for not like, I don't know, setting the entire place on fire accidentally. I then very patiently waited for my target to head into the core, when I would then immediately sack the crazy lady working as the core maintenance engineer, because I had a feeling she was just unhinged enough to cook my target in a fit of rage for getting fired. Fortunately, my gut instinct is always right and so she cooked my target in a fit of rage for getting fired Toasty. It was now time to head to Argentina. I handed the lovely lady my invitation that I stole off some idiot in the car park and headed straight to the dance floor, where I had a good old-fashioned hoedown. Yup, 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 yup. And then I remembered that I had a mission story that resulted in the termination of my target without me having to do anything, kinda sorta. In order to put my plan into action, however, I needed to disguise myself as Gaucho, but I had no idea who the- Eventually, however, after a bunch of faffing about, I found him chilling out in a lavender bush, so I cracked his skull and stole his clothes, skid-marked underpants and all. Now inside that box was a spotter's earpiece that would allow me to get in contact with the sniper team that were providing overwatch for the party in the event that, well... I turned up. Excited by the opportunity to test out my new photography skills, I ran back into the party, grinning from ear to ear, which to be fair was the only expression that my face was now capable of. The sniper team was waiting for me to send a photo through of their target, but having heard great things about their efficiency and ability to detect a target under even the most inconvenient of conditions, I decided to give them a challenge. Would they be able to find their target if all they had to work with was a close-up of their ass? I was also curious as to whether they were good enough to curve their bullets around any obstacles standing between them and their target so as not to cause any collateral damage. Take the shot. Over. As it turned out, the rumors were all true and they were actually that good. I got frisked yet again and somehow managed yet again to conceal 100 bananas inside myself and then use the power of the almighty dollar to lure an unsuspecting security guard into the lavender bushes so I could UFC him and steal his uniform. It was just then that my next target, Ronald McDonald Yates, walked by with his wife talking about some bullshit, which reminded me that all his wife needed was a little bit of encouragement. 
management and she would gladly push him off the balcony because she was unsatisfied with his tiny wiener. So I snuck my way down into the secret underground sex lab where information about a data leak was very cleverly being hidden inside a safe. I then snuck my way past the elite guards who must have done the course in how to be a guard and opened up the safe taking the data leak paperwork inside. I tried my darndest to give the paperwork to Ronald McDonald's wife but couldn't because she refused to look at me due to how simply irresistible I was. So I hopped off the balcony and handed them to her that way. A bit weird but you do what you've got to do. I then stood by quietly as she read over the paperwork clearly shook. I felt like they would have been easier to understand if she had have been reading them the right way up but I figured that maybe she was just on the flip side. Perfection. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The next thing I remember, however, I was half naked on a table with white powder all over my face. I had no idea how I got there or where I even was. All I knew was that I had white powder... <laughs> all over my face. I also knew that I never killed anybody and that I like choking people out. I like doing that a lot actually whenever the opportunity presented itself. See, I really like it and, and bopping people in the face too. That's a lot of fun as well. Don't. Bop, bop. Moving on, I picked up the rusty crowbar off the bench and used it to jack my way into a huge mysterious door. Ooh, instant death. Excellent. My favorite. It was fine though because I quite liked the idea of dying in a horrific train accident and so I shimmy my way across the one inch ledge on the side of a tremendously fast moving train in the middle of a snowstorm icy and rough enough to knock the bollocks off Santa himself. Besides that though there's not really much else to say about this mission because you literally do nothing and can finish it in about five minutes flat but I just casually walked through each carriage more or less ignored by everybody. That was great. I also crafted a makeshift silenced pistol at a workbench that I was completely unable to use because it was against my religion and I pinched a bar of soap that I had a feeling I would be dropping later to that evening. Then, after arriving at the end of the train, I put on something a little more sexual and yanked the big ding dong and said goodbye to all of my baggage. Goodbye, baggage. Now it was just me and Mr. Chodas. I don't suppose there's any point calling for help. No. Seems I brought this up myself. Well played, Miss Burnwood. Do you really think she'll be able to resist all that power? This is not how people work. She rejects the power, not the responsibility. A noble idea. But please join me in the real world. I trust you already know what this is. Why not simply take it? Embrace who you were always meant to be. No, never again. Go on then. Do your thing. I picked up the dirty needle off his desk that was full of Hitman jizz, but I didn't use it on him. Yet. First, I shot his laptop because I thought it was funny. Then I even gave him a head start and a chance to try and do something, but he was clearly intimidated by the sheer presence of Planet Earth's ultimate alpha male. That's, that's me by the way. I even went as far as dropping the soap and then bending over, but nothing. Nothing at all. No reaction whatsoever. So I finally just gave him the booster shot of Hitman jizz to the neck. No. No! Forgive me. What were we talking about? Don't worry. Then slammed on the emergency brakes and hopped off the train on the middle of some bridge like 5,000 feet above ground level in the middle of a snowstorm in the middle of nowhere without my iPhone textbook alpha move. And so we rejoin our hero, Agent Bozo, <laughs> at a face slapping contest somewhere in the Bahamas or whatever, where he was completely slapping the shite out of everyone atop a mountainous table of bananas. Now, fortunately, unfortunately, my superpower was fixing boat engines, and I remembered that my target's boat was f So I decided to do the right thing and fix it for him. Finding a wrench in the Bahamas is hard, but you can always count on the chef to have one. Now, with wrench in hand, I used my other super power bananas to create a distraction so i could hop through the window and work my magic on the boat engine i then punctured the ginormous gasoline canister with my screwdriver knowing quite well that nobody would notice but hey if you're standing ankle deep in petrol and don't see it or at the very least smell it you might be better off dead That's okay. 
Now, with one of my two targets down, I ran towards the pirate gang's hideout and somehow jumped over the fence in my ginormous clown shoes and choked out the engineer to become one myself. Whilst running around the pirate place trying to figure out a way to make my target die without doing it myself, I remembered that there was a conveniently placed gas canister that the target liked to occasionally walk by whilst punching a durry. Oh, this shit. gave me great ideas. I would first, however, need to disguise myself on? as a hippie drug smuggler, which I did by buffing a hippie drug smuggler in the head and taking his hippie drug smuggling clothes. Yeah. Then, for I think the fourth and final time, I allowed another man to search my body for bananas and then started setting a grand trap that had nothing to do with my previous idea involving the gas canister because that's just how genius works. When resting bitch face finally arrived, we sent our hellos and she went to take in the beautiful ocean view in front of her, sadly completely disinterested in the beautiful <laughs> banana views also in front of her. Then when she wasn't looking, I very sneakily sandwiched her between two bananas and a hard place. When I don't oh, know who did this. Oh. Oh. It's me again. Someone got Taka. Taka's out of the way. Anyway, with that done, I headed into the secret underground base thing. He stole their boat and I was out of there. Hitman 3 in its entirety, fully completed without ever killing a single soul. I did it, so you never have to. Smash like, sub, send money, and possibly help too. Laters.